I'm absolutely delighted to introduce to the stage Ford President and CEO, Mr. Mark Fields. Well, it's great to be here at the 2016 Mobile World Congress. And if you think about it, Mobile World Congress and Ford have a very special history. Because five years ago, we were the first automaker to reveal a vehicle at this show. And we also announced Ford Sync, which is our in-car connectivity technology, was coming to Europe. Bill Ford also stood right here on this stage and surprised the audience when he said that Ford was beginning to fundamentally rethink transportation, and he laid out our blueprint for mobility. And last year here, we introduced Ford Smart Mobility, our plan to reshape the future of transportation and change the way the world moves, just like Henry Ford did more than a century ago. Ford Smart Mobility is our plan to be a leader in connectivity mobility, autonomous vehicles, the customer experience, and data and analytics. And last year here, we also introduced two new e-bikes, which are part of more than 30 global mo mobility experiments where we're studying how to help people move more easily through cities. And today, we'll share our next steps as we at Ford take on one of the most significant strategic shifts in our company's 113-year-old history as we expand our business from being an auto company to an auto and a mobility company. Now for us, this shift was driven by our changing world, which is becoming more crowded and more urbanized. Air quality is a very serious issue, and customer attitudes and priorities are changing rapidly. So consider this. Europe already is one of the most urban regions in the world, with 73% of the population living in cities. And the numbers continue to climb, even in mature cities and in regions. Take Barcelona. Here in Barcelona, it's already the sixth most populous urban center here in Europe. And it's expected to grow another 17% more to more than 5.5% million people by the year 2030. And as a result, of course, congestion and gridlock are on the rise, and consumers are really feeling it. Research indicates that the majority of people in Europe feel commuting can actually be more stressful than their daily jobs. And listen to this quote. My smartphone is my preferred mode of transport. And that's from Patrick McLaughlin, who is the UK's Secretary of State for Transportation. So people keep talking about how the auto industry needs to change to avoid being disrupted by the tech companies. Well, at Ford, we've decided to disrupt ourselves by expanding our business model. First, we're further growing our core business, which is all around designing, manufacturing, marketing, uh, servicing, and financing great cars, SUVs, trucks, and also electrified vehicles. But at the same time, we're aggressively pursuing emerging opportunities through Ford Smart Mobility and becoming part of transportation services to meet customer needs and become part of a huge revenue stream. Think about this. The traditional global auto industry generates about $2.3 trillion in revenue each year. And today at Ford, we get about 6% of that. At the same time, transportation services, which include things like mass transit, taxis, and ride sharing, 
totals about $5.4 trillion in revenue, an amount that's expected to grow steadily in the next 15 years. Yet today, Ford and our, our automotive competitors get virtually none of this business. And that is a massive opportunity. And it's the reason we're expanding our business model and our customer offerings. And we're doing this from a position of strength. Ford last year delivered record profits and grew our global market share due to the strength of our new products. We were America's best-selling vehicle for the sixth straight year in a row. And here in Europe, we grew our market share last year, the second year in a row, and we became Europe's top commercial vehicle brand. From the Fiesta small car to the Mustang sports car to our best-selling trucks and SUVs, our product strength continues to gain momentum. And that includes seven new or upgraded vehicles that we're introducing here in Europe this year alone, including the new Kuga, which is making its world debut right here at the Mobile World Congress. Kuga is a thoroughly modern SUV for today's world. It's connected, it's intuitive, it's more fuel efficient, and it's packed with semi-autonomous technologies like automatic braking and parking. And perhaps most importantly, at a mobile technology conference, it comes with Sync 3, the most advanced version of our popular in-car connectivity system, which I'll talk more about in a moment. Now, Kuga is already extremely popular. In fact, last year was Kuga's best ever sales year in Europe since it was introduced. And you can see the new Kuga, which is built right here in Spain, on our stand in Hall 3 uh, here today. And we encourage you to go check it out. Now, products like Kuga with Sync 3 are just one example of how serious we are of being an auto and a mobility company. You know, transportation, we feel, is on the cusp of a revolution. And it's inspiring a revolution at Ford. To us, mobility is about giving people the freedom to live, to work, and to play where they want. And it's about, it's about making people's lives better by changing the way the world moves. And today, we're proud to share more news tied to our progress in all five areas of Ford Smart Mobility. So let's start with connectivity. Ford Sync is the industry's most popular in-vehicle entertainment and communication system. And right now, there are more than 15 million Sync-equipped vehicles on the road globally. And by 2020, we expect more than 43 million vehicles will be on the road with Sync, helping drivers stay connected, on the move, while keeping their hands on the wheel and their eyes on the road. And today, we're announcing that our third generation Sync, Sync 3, is coming to Europe this year. It's gonna be debuting on Mondeo, S-Max, and Galaxy, and of course, the new Kuga. We're also announcing that Sync 3 will be compatible with both Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, giving users access to even more functionality via voice control or their touchscreen. Sync 3 is more intuitive, it's easier to use, and even quicker than the previous generation. It also has an all new graphical interface that smartphone users will find familiar and can be updated over the air through a Wi-Fi connection. Sync 3 also features five new languages supporting a broad spectrum of European markets and more conversational speech recognition. So just push a button and say, I need coffee, or I need petrol, or I need to park, and Sync 3 will find the places that you need to go. Today, we're also announcing at the same time five new AppLink partners in Europe. My Boxman, Hear Me Out, AccuWeather, Cadena Ser, and Los Cuarenta. And our AppLink platform and supporting developer program literally allows developers to develop apps directly for Sync 3, giving our customers easy access to their services, information, and entertainment. In fact, one of the partners, uh, My Boxman, traces its origins to a hackathon that we organized just a few months ago at Web Summit in Dublin. 
and my box man is a social shipping act, uh, think about uh, Uber for packages or for deliveries. So if you're making a journey, you can check the weather, and you can check whether anyone in your area uh, needs to get a package from where you are to where you're going. And in the process, well, you get to make a little money. So now let's talk about mobility. We're seeing great results from, the on, from our on-demand car sharing service that we launched in London last year, which we call GoDrive. GoDrive is growing fast because of the flexibility it provides customers with one-way trip availability, guaranteed parking, and pay-per-minute pricing, as opposed to the by-the-hour pricing of other services. And we've expanded the program to 25 hubs across London, including major transport centers such as Waterloo Station and City Airport. And as we've grown, we've gained important insights about what customers want in such a service. For example, almost half of GoDrive customers don't own or have access to a car, which means that they don't currently engage with Ford or buy our vehicles. And that means that GoDrive is bringing new people to Ford. Also, over 60% of GoDrive customers have chosen an electric vehicle at least once. And those who have, well, 97% of them say they would use an electric vehicle again. And with such great success that we're having with GoDrive, we're now expanding our efforts to parking. And today, we're announcing GoPark, which is a new pilot program to make parking in cities easier and, importantly, less stressful for drivers. GoPark is a predictive parking system that can actually direct customers to a place where they're most likely to find an open parking spot. And a group of residents from the bor borough of Islington in the UK have volunteered to take part in the pilot. And with their permission, we're equipping their vehicles with plug-in devices to collect data as they come and go from parking spaces in a defined area. And by observing patterns, and then combining that data with available city data uh, and traffic and parking conditions, we'll be able actually to predict available parking spots based on the time of day and location. And the best part? Well, Go Park is open to everyone, and you don't have to be, be a Ford owner to participate in this. Now, let's turn to autonomous vehicles, a subject of much discussion in our industry lately. And at Ford, we've been focused on autonomous vehicles for more than a decade. And this year, we'll have the largest autonomous test fleet among all automakers. We have vehicles on the road today in Michigan and Arizona, and we begin testing this year in California. And we'll be expanding even further in the future. Now, Ford's autonomous vehicle program goal is delivering the Society of Automotive Engineers level four capability, which is full autonomy in defined environments. This is the level that many of the technology companies are going for. And this takes the driver completely out of the loop, which ultimately leads to level five, which is full autonomy in any location and in any weather condition. And when the first Ford autonomous vehicle comes out, it will be an autonomous vehicle designed to serve millions of customers, not just for those who buy luxury vehicles. Now, at the same time, we're also absolutely committed to serving millions of customers today with automated technology that can assist them in becoming better drivers. We already are a leader with semi-autonomous and driver assist technologies. So on our vehicles today, you can steer into a parallel or a perpendicular uh, parking spot. You can remain in your lane by alerting you or providing steering assistance. Maintain a set speed and distance between vehicles on the highway, even in stop and go traffic. And apply brakes if a collision is imminent. And today, we're happy to announce that during the next five years, we're tripling our engineering investment in driver assist and semi-autonomous vehicle technology, and accelerating development and availability for our customers. This includes some new features, like traffic jam assist and fully active park assist. Traffic jam assist 
can relieve driver stress and enhance comfort by helping control the acceleration, the braking, and the steering during slow moving and stop and go traffic. Fully active parking assist will help drivers automatically pull into a parking spot by controlling the steering, the shifting, and the braking at the touch of a button. And we'll introduce both of these features and more during the next three years. And again, as we do this, we promise that these technologies will be available on our highest volume products, delivering on our commitment as a company to serve millions of people and not just for those who can buy luxury vehicles. So let's turn to data and analytics, another important area. One of the ways that we're learning about what customers will want and need in future mobility is by working actually with game developers. And last August, we launched the Ford Smart Mobility Game Challenge at GamesCon in Cologne, Germany. We encourage developers to create fun and engaging games that tackle the challenge of integrating different transport modes within a city. And we've been overwhelmed, literally overwhelmed, by the ideas that have come in. And we'll announce the winner here at the Mobile World Congress later this week. Now, as we make this transition to an auto and a mobility company, there's another very important part of our strategy. And that's about transforming the customer experience. This is influencing every part of our business, from our core business of cars, SUVs, and trucks, to emerging opportunities and all of our Ford Smart Mobility work. And the opportunity here is literally huge. Now, traditionally, we've dedicated most of our energy, and for that matter, money, to attracting new customers about a year before they actually buy a vehicle. And then we pretty much don't engage them until their next purchase. Well, that's about to change. Think about this. The average Ford owner spends about 900 hours a year inside of his or her car. Yet, in that same year, they spend, on average, only four and a half hours in our dealerships or interacting with our brand. And we absolutely know we need to engage customers differently going forward. So during the past 18 months, we've had a small group working secretly with customers and actually studying other companies that have transformed their customer experience focus. Companies like Nespresso and the clubs that they create, or Rip Curl with wearables to actually recreate the surfing experience, and Nike with its digital ecosystem. We've also been working with anthropologists and sociologists and digital experts studying what consumers want even before they can express it. And the result is Ford Pass. So take a look. Imagine a world where it's easy to get where you want to go, where people have the freedom to live, work, and play wherever they want. Think of customer service no one else has imagined. With a personal mobility assistant available night or day to resolve all your mobility challenges. Whether guiding you through traffic, finding parking, or helping you navigate your favorite city. Imagine being connected to your world with the touch of a button to reserve and pay for parking. Share a car or a ride. Receive free parking and rewards when you travel. Imagine a hub where you can visit in the world's busiest cities. A place where you can rethink mobility virtually build your ideal vehicle, experience new innovations, join exclusive events, and a place to collaborate and share ideas. Imagine an appreciation program that values and rewards you with services, entertainment, and merchandise just for living life as we do. Imagine no more. Ford is delivering this vision for millions of people starting this year. Introducing Ford Pass. So Ford Pass reimagines the entire customer experience and aims to do for the auto industry what iTunes did for the music industry. And think about Ford Pass as a digital, physical, and personal mobility experience platform that includes four main parts. 
a marketplace of mobility solutions, Ford guides who are always there to help, appreciation where members are rewarded for their loyalty, and Ford hubs where customers can experience our latest innovations. And we're introducing Ford Pass in the UK, in Germany, and France later this year. Importantly, anyone can become a member for free, whether you own a Ford or not, just by registering online. And like other platforms, Ford Pass will continuously grow and evolve and improve each year. And today, we're pleased to share details of our first offerings here in Europe, starting with Marketplace. We're announcing a new partnership with Mobile City for parking. We're also announcing that in Germany, Europe's largest car sharing market, that we're strengthening our partnership with the car sharing company Flinkster. The second element of Ford Pass is Ford Guides. These are real people who provide real-time mobility solutions 24-7, including reserving and paying for your parking ahead of time. And the guides are available free of charge, and their only job is to serve, guide, and solve, and not to sell. Moving on to appreciation, we're partnering with McDonald's and 7-Eleven to provide Ford Pass members access to merchandise and unique experiences as rewards for parking or interacting with one of our guides or paying for vehicle service at one of our dealerships. And today, we're announcing a new Ford Pass partner, BP. So think about this. Imagine a future where Ford Pass directs you to stop by a BP station near you because it knows that you're running low on fuel. And imagine that you never have to pull out your wallet when you fill up at a BP station because as a Ford Pass member, you can fuel and pay for your gas through Ford Pass, while at the same time earning appreciation points that can later be redeemed for fuel or a drink or some food. And we're not just imagining this. These are the kind of opportunities that we're pursuing with our partners for Ford Pass members. And finally, the hubs. We're launching four hubs around the world, including one in London. Now, inside a hub, you'll be able to explore Ford's latest innovations, learn about our mobility solutions, and experience exclusive events. So from a customer standpoint, great experiences like those that we'll be delivering with Ford Pass lead to long-term relationships. And from a business standpoint, well, it'll drive greater loyalty, it'll bring new customers into Ford, and also accelerate forward in becoming a serious player in mobility services. And as we look into that future, it's clear that we're on the cusp of a mobility revolution. And I have to tell you, the entire Ford team is committed to expanding as both an auto and a mobility company. And we're absolutely committed to providing great products and great experiences and we're committed to making people's lives better and by changing the way the world moves, just like our founder did 113 years ago today. Thank you very much.